Welcome everyone. In this walkthrough, we'll look at a really tricky redox titration problem. It's a year two question with lots of steps, and it's important for you to be able to identify the essential information given in questions like this. You have to show your working out very clearly so that you get plenty of method marks, even if the final answer is wrong. Let's get started. As you can see, it's a really long question. So pause the video, read it carefully, and press play when you're ready for the next part. And here's the rest of the question. So read it carefully, pause the video, and press play when you're ready to go through the answer. So as you can see, it's a very long question, and most students who sat this paper found it very difficult. I'm going to show you how to approach this question to get the maximum marks possible, even if you're not sure how to get the final results. First of all, don't be put off with longer questions. They can be daunting, but persevere. You will face longer questions in your final exams. Practice reading similar questions, read them carefully, and highlight the key pieces of information. Here, I've only left the essential details in, but it's still pretty long. I recommend that you draw a diagram. This will help you to visualize which chemicals are were and when. There are three key parts to this question. First of all, a 250 centimeter cube solution is made containing sodium ethane dioate and ethane dioic acid dihydrate. 25 centimeters cubed of this solution is titrated against manganate ions in the first titration. 25 centimeters cubed of the same solution is titrated against hydroxide ions in the second titration. One of the skills that you will develop is recognizing the reagents. Potassium manganate 7 provides the MnO4 minus ions. The sulfuric acid is added in excess to provide the H plus ions needed for the reaction to proceed. The solution is heated in order to extract all of the ethane dioate ions. Here's the first exam technique tip. Show your working out. Show the equations, the species that the equation is related to, and the numbers that you are using. Include units, even on your in-process results. The concentration and volume of manganate can be used to work out the amount of manganate ions. 5.30 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. It's a 2 to 5 reaction, so multiplying this number by 2.5 gives the amount of ethane dioate ions. 1.325 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Remember that this is in 25 centimeters cubed of the solution. Multiply this by 10 to find out the amount of ethane dioate ions in the original 250 cm cube solution. We follow a similar approach for the second titration. Work out the amount of hydroxide ions using concentration and volume. This works out to be 1.045 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. It's a 1 to 2 reaction. So divide by 2 to work out the amount of ethane dioic acid, 5.225 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. This is the amount of ethane dioic acid in 25 centimeters cubed. So multiply by 10 to find the amount of ethane dioic acid in the original 250 centimeter cube solution. This works out to be 5.225 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. The amount of sodium ethane dioate is the difference between the amount of dioate ions and the amount of ethane dioic acid. This works out to be 8.025 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. We can calculate the mass of sodium ethane dioate using mass is equal to number of moles times by molar mass. This works out to be 1.0754 grams. The percentage of sodium ethane dioate is found by dividing its mass by the mass of the sample and multiplying by 100. The data in the question is given to three significant figures, so the final answer must also be given to three significant figures. This works out to be 56.6%. Well, that was a really long question and many students found it very difficult. I hope it made sense. I welcome any of your questions, comments or suggestions. 
please subscribe and click the bell for notifications. Take care and goodbye.